up next we have a, a Transcend VR team. Um, I, I don't want to say too much. I think the demo is a lot of fun, but it's a new kind of uh, social experience and classroom experience. So Transcend, take us away. Take us yes. up. And I was muted. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sean, and Joey, Yuna, Beth, and I are here to tell you about Transcend, the VR classroom experience. The four of us are members of Full Stack Academy's very first ever fully remote cohort. We experience the same challenging curriculum as our on-campus peers, but our lack of a shared physical space has made it harder for us to bond and build friendships. Our project fills this gap by building the world's first ever virtual reality classroom fully powered by open web technologies. Between a 2015 Pew Research survey that suggests millennials are increasingly willing to make friends virtually over the internet, and psychological research that suggests humans experience space in VR very similar to the physical world, we believe that Classroom VR has the potential to add a new level of immersion to remote education. And now I'd like to hand things off to our chief happiness engineer, Yuna, to show you Transcend. Thanks, Sean. So for today's demo, we're going to be focusing on the browser view, but we do have beta support for the Daydream headset for anyone who is interested. So right now we have our instructor, Omri, log into the Transcend app. When he first logs in, he'll be spawned into the main room. Here he can roam around using his WASD or arrow key controls. We also implemented peer-to-peer -peer audio so he can speak with other players in the same room in real time. One of the things that Omri can do is also pick his avatar skin. He can do that at the gap. In order to switch between rooms, he can simply place his cursor over the orb for one second or click on it. Now that he's in the room, he sees a wide selection of costumes to pick from. We see here Sean also picking a costume for himself. Today, Omri will go with Admiral Grace Hopper. Now that he has his costume picked out, he's gonna return back to the lobby where a few students are talking, but he'll see Danny whom he'll want to speak with in private. Properly plugged into the wall. Is there electricity flowing? Uh, well, hey, it's a little loud in here. You wanna to go to the cat room? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Do you have the proper drivers installed for your monitor? Wow, this is an amazing room. Uh, wow. Um, Anyways, I just wanted to talk about my favorite students. Do you know who they are? Oh, no, I don't. Well, there's Yuna, Beth, Sean, and Joey. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. They're pretty great. I know. Well, I'm glad we're on the same page about this. We can head back to the lobby now. Cool. See you there. Now that Omri's expressed everything that's on his mind, he'll log out for the day. Now I'll pass it on to Joey. He'll talk about some of the technologies we use and some problems that we faced. Thanks, Yuna. One of the main technologies we used throughout our project was Redux on both the front and back end. Our back end Redux state serves as our centralized source of truth for all users. It holds user data, which rooms users are in, and where the users are positioned in the world. When a user executes an action, it is stored in the user's local Redux state, then emitted through a socket connection to the back end. The back end updates the global state and emits the changes to all of the users so they can update their view. On the front end, we used A-Frame to render our 3D scenes. A-Frame is a relatively new web VR technology driven by Mozilla. It's built on top of WebGL and 3GS and allows 3D entities to be written straight onto the DOM as HTML elements. We faced several race conditions with A-Frame where we were trying to add users before our scene was loaded. We fixed this issue by bouncing socket events off the back end when the scene was loaded before receiving user information. This forced the user to render the other users on the DOM before updating their position on the tick. Another major technology we used to establish voice communication is WebRTC and peer-to-peer -peer connections. So when a user connects to a new room, they send an offer to the backend for a new peer connection. The backend then emits this to all of the users in the room who reply with an answer. When the new user receives all of the answers, a new peer-to-peer -peer connection is established between the user and the other members of the chat room, thus allowing real-time voice communication to be achieved. Let me hand it off to Beth to discuss other technologies and problems we face. Thanks, Jay. One of our main sources of both fun and frustration throughout the project, like Joey said, is that A-Frame is relatively new. When we created Transcend, it was only on version 0.4, so there were still a lot of inherent bugs, and there was a lack of documentation for some of the more complicated features. We had several conversations with core contributors who were sometimes just as puzzled as we were by issues we were facing, as the Slack conversation shows. In addition, Rendering A-frame elements with React is still relatively untested and they didn't necessarily play nice with each other. 
They're fundamentally based on different programming paradigms and both had their quirks as to what they liked and accepted about the other. For example, height and width are reserved words in React, and so we couldn't render native A-frame entities like A-boxes, as you see in the first code snippet. Instead, we had to render them in a more 3JS-like fashion. We attempted to use a raycaster to detect intersections with the ground to enable teleportation in the Daydream headset. In conjunction with the number of 3D elements we were rendering, we ended up hitting the limits of what a mobile browser could do. Um, so we needed to find a way to optimize. Uh, and to do that, we ended up turning on the raycaster only when you click the controller um, instead of having it always on. Lastly, one of our other primary challenges was link traversal. Chrome security issues mean we're unable to use a lot of WebVR APIs, including hyperlinks. Um, we found that pure hyperlinks uh, to get a user from scene to scene would knock the user out of VR mode, which isn't what we want at all. And so our teleporter orbs are essentially React router links, um, where clicking a link clears the DOM, renders a new room component within the same ACN tag. Thank you, Beth. On this slide, you'll find our GitHub project. Stars are appreciated, issues are encouraged, and forks are welcome. Our project is also hosted live on Heroku. Feel free to join, make friends, and be good to each other. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Transcend team. Um, stellar job, uh, really cool app. Um, yeah, I mean, I gotta say, you got React in there, you got A-Frame, you got WebRTC, you got the Google headset stuff. Um, yeah, it's a one thing. What is that? What's the word for that? Um, uh, buzzword bingo. I think they won buzzword bingo here. Yeah, they got a lot of buzzwords <laughs> in there. One thing I didn't understand though is why you make people shop at the Gap, but. Some technical things will just, you know, <laughs> leave for another time. But that was very impressive. That that it looks a little bit like the full stack campus. I think I love the uh, the full stack box with the two monitors on top, and the whole nineteen eighty four gallery view um, that they had in the in the big room. Um, and we actually do have a cat room like that on campus. It's a uh, staff only though. All right, great work.